Well, hey there, guys. This is my latest build of a uh, bull feeder for Cousin Dave. And I just wanted to show it to you before I shipped it out. And I did a few things to this thing. I uh, definitely went overboard on it. Uh, so I'll show you what I did. Uh, earlier videos, I put uh, a casing on here for your tightening of the uh, flip plate right here. This is my uh, modification to the spring that's uh, on Thingiverse. I put a housing down here for all my electronics. Uh, you know, I have a fuse here. I have a light that's uh, in the circuit for the fuse, so when the light goes out, that means the fuse is blown. You have the on function, and then you have the off function, but sometimes what happens with these worm gear motors, they're so, uh, you know, you can't back the plate up if they jam, so I put a reverse circuit into this thing. So off also uh, is your reverse, but your reverse is controlled by a momentary button over here. And you just tap that and it would go into reverse to release the jam. Uh, let's see here. Let me just spin this thing around. And okay. And then on the back of the box here, I have my 12 volt power supply. That just plugs right in. And spin this one more time. Like that. And then over here, this is where the limit switch plugs into. Uh, the stand itself, uh, this will be mounted to the bench, and his star press will be mounted right in front of this. I did an offset so he can get this thing really close to the uh, press itself, and the tube will hang pretty much directly over top of it. The less bends in the uh, tube itself, the spring tube for the uh, bullet feeder, uh, the better. And the way I did that, this is a one inch square stock right here. And how I held that in place, these are a, a real bear to bend up. I had to get them good and hot and tap them in, you know, with a hammer on the, on the vise. But that's just a clamp and then, a, you know, a bolt in there that'll pinch right onto, uh, right onto the uh, pipe itself. This way, uh, you change anything, you have to adjust anything. You can just, uh, let me see if I can get my hand under here. This will just slide up right over the pipe like that. I made the pipe a little bit longer here, the, the square tubing, because he was talking about extending the uh, tubes off the star sizer. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me get this thing hooked up for you, and I'll show you uh, how it looks all finished up. Okay, guys, before I get this fully assembled, I want to uh, just bring up a point here that I discovered so you have your collar here this fits into your limit switch and it just threads over the uh, spring tube itself and I was seeing some feeding issues in the limit switch itself and I discovered because this just threads onto the spring itself you can see it right there and what happens if this is in a little bit like that it creates a little gap in the limit switch and if especially if it has any kind of shoulder it can catch the uh, catch the hole inside of the uh, limit switch itself so what I discovered is if you screw this collar on and you just let that let that spring hang out just a little bit like that when you press that on <clears throat> excuse me you'll have a good contact and there won't be any air gap between the uh, limit switch and that spring. So that's just a little side note on that. Okay, this thing's all hooked up now. I got the flip plate in there. I uh, went through that on earlier videos. I got the limit switch on here. This is some mechanical. Uh, this was already made up with the switch in it. If I did another one, I would do the optical uh, switch but this was already made and ready to go, so I was going to remake it again. So we have our power supply hooked up. You can see the lights on. If I uh, just unscrew the fuse, you'll see once that fuse is disconnected there, that light goes on. That would indicate that the fuse is blown. That would happen on a jam up uh, if it overloads. So we put that back in. Got the reverse switch in here, uh, power's on, 
and cousin Dave if you haven't noticed who he is uh, he's uh, Thorzax he has a channel uh, really smart guy so uh, I put a adjustable 12 volt on this thing and I thought I'd personalize it for him so I actually put his name on the power supply this goes up to 12.6 down to 3.994 volts uh, so you can adjust it all through the power ranges uh, I designed this plate around this bullet right here and you can see it has that shoulder on there and that's really what made things uh, made things hard and uh, so got that uh, so if uh, if I turn it on it'll just go in normal position now if I switch it in the off reverse uh, position and I have to hold this little flapper back when I do this so I gotta try to do this one-handed here and uh, so I'm gonna hold this uh, hold this flapper back and now I'm gonna tap the uh, tap that reverse switch so that it, it goes back if you got a jam really I would suggest that if you have an adjustable I would just turn this all the way down to its minimum and then reversed is a, a slower a slower motion on this so you can see if I do that now it's a lot slower because you only want to tap it a little bit to release it from the hole so that's pretty much it uh, I'll go over quickly how I put the reverse switch in and uh, and we'll uh, we'll do it from there okay this is how I put the reverse circuit in here uh, so I got a little sketch here this uh, switch right here it is a double pole double throw switch this two position it, it's down and it locks up that's two position right there I did have in my cabinet this is a three position so this will lock down it'll lock in the center and it'll lock up that would actually work if uh, that's all you got they both have six terminals on them so what we have here you're looking at the back of the switch and this the switch would be that way so the toggle's going back and forth that way so you have your motor here and off your motor you have your positive the red and you have the negative coming off here they I hooked those up into the center terminal themselves so when the switch gets flipped it flips between this set of contacts and this set of contacts that's that's it it only goes from here to here or here to here so then you have 12 volt coming in so you have the red and you have the black coming here so when the switch is flipped it goes from red to red black to black on the other side I did a jumper wire from the negative and then I brought it up on the top now that's going to flip the polarity for reverse so that just jumps over this wire and comes over to here off the positive I made another jumper come over that, that's just a jumper and it goes into a normally open momentary switch and then from there I ran that up to here so now you can see red to black and black to red and that'll set up for that and what you need is you know just a little little you know spring loaded momentary button like that uh, running the 370 motors in there they seem okay we'll see how they last in the long run uh, they're not as beefy as the mr. bull feeder motors but uh, they're cheap so this is uh, this is it I don't have the files to share and this is for the guys that do have the files and uh, so that's about it guys uh, so that's this build all right see you guys later